Shalom, Most High and Christ bless. Today we're going to be discussing this week's um, news with our sister Kim Burrell. She's been catching a whole lot of heat through the media for her so-called rant against homosexuals. Gospel singer Kim Burrell is under fire for comments she made about gays and lesbians. She says she will not apologize for her sermon at a Houston church where she referred to gay and lesbian sex as perverted. Well, there's no space, there's no room for any kind of prejudice in 2017 or moving on. Like, there's no, yeah. there's no room. To every person that is dealing with the homosexual spirit that has it, I love you because God loves you. But God hates the sin. She's a fantastic singer, but you have to choose what side you're on. And I'm choosing empathy, I'm choosing inclusion, and I'm choosing love for everybody. And Kim Burrell is still facing major backlash after a video surfaced of the gospel singer making homophobic remarks during a church sermon. You are a woman and will shake your face in another woman's breast. You are promoted. She later defended her comments in a Facebook video. She was set to perform with Pharrell today until Ellen canceled her appearance. I didn't feel like that was good of me to have her on the show, to right. give her a platform after she's saying things about me. So we're going to go into the Bible and see, is, is this truth or if it's false, okay, for our sister. Let's start with uh, 1 John, 1 John 3 and 4, because the sister Kim Burrell said, if you are living that lifestyle of a homosexual, that it is sin. And because of her saying this, she's losing endorsements, they're canceling her shows, and they're basically degrading her in the media. All right, let's go through the scriptures. First John three and four, let's see what God has to say. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. So what is sin? Sin is transgressing of the law, meaning breaking God's laws, read. For sin is the transgression of the law. The transgression of the law. The law is found where? Through the Old Testament all the way into the New. The Bible itself is a book of laws, is a book of conduct. Now let's go to the Old Testament. Let's start with Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. Book of Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind. The Bible says, if a man also lieth with mankind, meaning male on male sex, whether it's oral, anal, whatever you want to call it, whether it's kissing and the other stuff that they do, the other perverted stuff that they do. God said, if a man lie with a man, read on. As he lieth with a woman. Because a man is supposed to lie with a woman. You do those things with a woman. A male and a male is not supposed to be together. A woman and a woman is not supposed to be together. Read on. Both of them have committed an abomination. Both of them, meaning the one that's giving and the one that's receiving, has committed an abomination. Abominable means something's d disgusting, something putrid, something unlawful, something unseemly according to God. Read on. They shall surely be put to death. Now, during the time of Moses, those men or women that were caught in that act, they were put to death. But now we're under the new covenant under Christ where God will have mercy on us. Where we must repent and come out of that lifestyle, not continue in that lifestyle. Let's go to Romans. Because a lot of people like to say the Old Testament is done away with. We can uh, come as you are. If you're a homosexual, come as you are. If you're a transgender, come as you are. If you're a lesbian, come as you are. And all you have to do is scream on the name Jesus, and it's going to be all good. Let's find out. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 23. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Mm -hmm. and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. So God gave up certain people to their uncleanness and their own lust, meaning whatever your heart desired. Read on. To dishonor their own bodies. So when a homosexual, when a man lies down with another man, or when a lesbian, a woman, lies down with another woman, you are defiling your own body. Read that again. To dishonor. You are dishonoring what? Their own body. You are dishonoring your own body. Why? Because you cannot be fruitful and multiply. 
When you have a man with a man, you cannot be fruitful and multiply. When you have a woman with a woman, you cannot be fruitful and multiply. You are dishonoring your own body. And according to Corinthians, your body is your temple. Read on. Between themselves. Mm -hmm. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? So the truth of God is what? What is the truth? The truth is God's laws. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Because God's truth is that a man is supposed to be with a woman. God's truth is that a woman is supposed to be with a man. But only here in America, they tell you that what? Two men can lay down together. Two men can have sex with no consequences, like God is just gonna smile. Two women can lay down with each other, like God is okay with that. Read on. For this cause. For what cause? Their affection one toward another, their evil lusts. For this cause, come on. God gave them up unto vile affection. So God gave them up unto vile affection because they wanted to transgress God's laws and follow after their own ways, follow after their own heart. God said, I'm going to give them up to vile affection. Read on. For even their women. For what? For even their women. Come on. Did change the natural use into that which is against nature. What is the natural use of a woman? To get married and to reproduce, to have sex and bring forth children. That is the natural use of a woman. But America tells you no. America tells you two women can get together. Now when we have our sister Kim Burrell speak out against this in her church, even though she shouldn't be um, preaching the word of God, usur usurping authority over the, over the congregation, we'll get in, We'll also get into that a little later. The people turn against her. The media turn against her. White America turn against her. Her own preachers, her own fellow preachers that she went to school with, they turn against her. Come on. And likewise also the men. Likewise also the men. Leaving the natural use of the woman. How do the, the men leave the natural use of the woman? Homosexuality. They go lay down with other men. They turn into Caitlyn Jenner. Like you have Bruce Jenner turn into Caitlyn Jenner. All right, but only, uh, only in America they allow you to do stuff like that. They push, they have a, a homosexual sodomite agenda. All right, in America. And all of our people are falling into that. So-called blacks and Hispanics and native, native Indians who are the true children of Israel. All right, God says he doesn't want us to follow after that lifestyle. Read on. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust. So what happens when you have two men together? They're burning in their lust. They can't control their sexual desires. Burned in their lust one toward another. Mm -hmm. Men with men, working that which is unseen. Working that which is what? Unseemly. So God says when you have two men lusting after each other, when you have two men laying down with each other, that is unseemly. That is unseemly. Meaning that is not something that should be seen, okay? God is completely against homosexuality. Okay, read on. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, meaning AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, and all these different diseases. Read on. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, mm -hmm. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. So God gave them over to a reprobate mind because homosexuals didn't want to retain God in their knowledge. All right? They'll tell you that, guess what? Homosexuality is a trait that you're born with. God made me like that. No, but according to the word of God, God didn't say that. The scripture says God made man upright. Okay? But only in America they tell you you can do what you want to do. You be with whoever you want to be with, so you're following your lust. You're following your own vain um, desires that you have in your mind. And you're walking contrary to God's word. So God gave them up to a reprobate mind. Meaning homosexuals, when you look at the community of homosexuals, a lot, it's, it's a lot of violence within that community. Also, that kind of lifestyle can lead to mental sickness. Now, the cell phone video from a wild scene on an A train. Police tonight looking for a well-dressed woman who they say suddenly slashed two people on a Brooklyn train. Here's CBS 2's Dave Carlin. I'm going to get away with it. 
This smartphone video shows a stylish suspect riding an A train in Brooklyn around 7 p.m. Friday in a yellow tailored coat, accessorized with a big red bag, movie star sunglasses, and a razor that you see she is not afraid to use. Okay. The two minute, 15 second video does not show the beginning of a heated conversation between strangers. It took this sudden violent turn southbound between J Street and Nostrand Avenue. The woman lunges with the razor at the man she's been arguing with. Shut up. Hi, I'm used to camera. Oh my God. That is. That's unbelievable. Subway riders who say they've seen a lot of unpleasant things on trains find it chilling that this suspect appeared to jab at the victim, stop to pose for the camera, then return to violence that gets worse as other riders try and fail to restrain her. But that's especially scary because it's not who you would expect. <laughs> she looked like she's normal, like she's she's taking out something on her bag. This is snaps. They can't see it. Like she got attitude. Police estimate she's 30 years old and six feet tall. And they want help catching this furious fashionista before she flashes an angry side again. All right now, let's get Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 9. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. The homosexual and sodomite agenda in America, God is saying, unless he left a small remnant, meaning a small amount of people that's going to what? Preach the gospel the way it should be taught, and that's going to stand up for the laws against the Most High. That's going to stand up against homosexuality. God's saying if he have not left the remnant of these men on the earth to keep his laws and to teach his laws, thus saith the Lord, all of us would have been as um, Sodom and um, Gomorrah. That's what the Most High is saying. Psalm chapter 94, verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity... What is the throne of in iniquity? America. America is the throne of iniquity. So God is saying, shall the throne of iniquity... Have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law. So what is the law that America has framed mischief by? The law of two men can get married. The law of two women can get married. That is against God's words. But in America, what do they do? They have you swear on the Bible, and then they cast the Bible behind their back. On the back of their dollar bill, they have, in God we trust. They don't trust in God. They don't trust in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They trust in gold, oil, and diamonds. That's what they trust in. They do things completely contrary to God's words. And then if you speak and you stand up for the one true God, they condemn you, just like they condemn in our sister Kim Burr. Now, we love our sister, all right? We love all of our sisters. But the Bible specifically tells you that a woman is not supposed to usurp authority over the man. Let's get that. A woman is not supposed to be teaching the congregation of Israel. That is the job of the man. 1 Timothy 2 and 11 tells you that a woman is not supposed to teach the men. Read. Let the woman learn in silence. God says, let the woman learn in silence. Read on. With all subjection. Because what was going on in the, in the church of Corinth, you had women trying to what? Teach the men. Usurp authority over the men. Be the teachers and be the preachers. Read. But I suffer not a woman to teach. The Most High God said to Paul, he suffer not a woman to teach. Okay? So the points that Kim... Burrow brought out was on point as far as the laws of God, but she should not be teaching the congregation, especially with a Christmas tree in the back. All right, you're speaking out against homosexuality, but at the same time, not only are you teaching the congregation, which you should not be doing, but you have a Christmas tree in the back. You're still enforcing and pushing white supremacy. Okay, is Christmas against um, God? Of course, Jeremiah the 10th chapter tells you that. All right, you can read it on your own. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1 through 4. So Kim Burrell was right for, for, um, for saying that homosexuality was wrong, and it's a sin. And it is a sin, and we're proving that with the word of God. If you're coming from that lifestyle, you can repent of that. You can change from that. That's what grace under Christ is about, the forgiveness of sins, that we can repent. But those who choose not to repent, Revelation chapter 21. 
Revelation chapter 21 verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. So God says he is speaking in a masculine form, but it's also talking to the woman. He that overcometh. You so-called blacks, you so-called Hispanics, and you so-called native Indians out there. If you overcome, overcome what? Trials, tribulations, and your own personal sins. Read on. And I will be his God, and he shall be. God says if you overcome your sins, your trials and tribulations, he is going to be your God. Meaning you are going to inherit the kingdom in, of heaven on earth. That's to come under Christ. Read on. But... But those who don't want to repent, those who want to stay in that homosexual lifestyle, or whatever lifestyle you come out of that's contrary to God's words. But the fearful. But the fearful, the fearful to keep God's commandments. Because the other preachers, your Creflo Dollars, your TD Jakes and so forth, all of these preachers that's turning their back on Kimberell for speaking the word of God, for saying homosexuality is sin. Guess what? You are fearful. You are weak, effeminate men. Why? Because you rather side with America. You're afraid of losing the members in your church. You're afraid of losing your tithing money. You're afraid of, of losing the respect that you have in the so-called media today. You're fearful of keeping God's commandments. So God says the fearful and unbelieving and unbelieving, and you truly don't believe in this word. You yeah. truly don't believe in this word because you're not standing firm for the words of God. Read on. And the abominable. And the abominable. God said when two men lay down with each other, that's an abomination. When two women lay with each other, that's an abomination. When you're transgender, that's an abomination. God says, and the abominable. And murderers. Come on. And whoremongers. And whoremongers. And sorcerers and idolaters and all liars mm -hmm. shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and Brimstone. our words? No. Are these Kim Burrow's words? No. These are the words of the Heavenly Father. That each and every one of you Christians, each and every one of you pastors, and even each and every one of you homosexuals, you got a Bible in your house, but you won't do what God says to do. All right? So it's a new day. We got to repent. We got to come out of these filthy lifestyles that we're in, and we got to keep God's commandments. And with that, we say shalom. Thank <laughs> you.